Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we will work a practice problem in OneNote related to the calculation of operating income, which is going to be a component, a part of the financial statement of the income statement. Get ready, because it's time to take a stance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to follow along in OneNote, but if you have access to it and would like to, we're going to be under the 214 Operating Income tab under the Practice Problems section. Closing this back out, we're going to be calculating the operating income. Operating income will be part of the income statement. The income statement is going to be one of the major financial statements. When you think about the financial statements, the two that should pop to your mind first are going to be the balance sheet and the income statement. Balance sheet and income statement. Income statement is a performance statement. The balance sheet is going to be reporting where we stand at a particular point in time. Now, we're also going to have, we could have a statement of equity or statement of retained earnings, and we could have a statement of cash flows as well. Uh, but note that the reason you want to focus in on the balance sheet and the income statement is because they represent basically all of the accounts that we'll be working with from, from a financial accounting kind of standpoint. Meaning if you had a trial balance, the, any account with activity in it that's going to be on the financial statements will basically be in the balance sheet and the income statement. All trial balance accounts will be converted into the balance sheet and the income statement. The statement of cash flows will basically convert uh, some of our information from an accrual basis concept to a cash flow basis concept to add more information to it. But when we're actually putting together financial transactions, you're thinking of us creating the financial statements in terms of an accrual basis, creating the balance sheet and the income statement. Now, because we're focusing in, in on finance here, we're not going to be focusing in on the financial transactions as much. We're not going to be going into the nitty gritty of every, every transaction that's going to happen and how we're going to create uh, the financial statements. We would do that in accounting and you might want to do that because doing that will give you a better understanding of how the financial statements are created uh, and the double entry accounting system within them. But with finance, we're typically more concerned with, with the financial statements themselves and then what we can do with, with the uh, analysis with the use of those financial statements. To do that, we still need to construct the financial statements. We still need to know, we need to know in detail all the components of the financial statements so that we can then take those components into consideration as we do ratio analysis on them. So we'll still go through the components of creating the financial statements, looking at operating income and so on, but we won't spend as much time or a very little time compared to financial accounting, looking at the actual transactions in terms of debits and credits, building up the debits and credits and then creating uh, a trial balance and then creating the uh, the financial statements from them so as we learn these components then we're going to do more of basically having kind of like generic information that we're going to have and then we're going to we're going to discuss what that information means put together the financial statements with it until we've memorized basically the components of the financial statements what those financial statements mean and therefore can use them to make uh, better decision making and run you know analysis on them okay so the information we have is revenue Cost of goods sold, selling, and administrative expenses are a percentage of revenue, 12%, and then the depreciation. We're going to go through a very standardized kind of set of uh, income statement, building on it as we go. So we'll use very similar accounts. Note that if you, if you work with different industries, they might name the accounts slightly differently. We'll try to point that out as we go. So if we were going to then create the top half of the income statement, operating income, we're always going to start off with basically revenue. So we're thinking income statement accounts. These are performance accounts. This is how we did over time. Income statement accounts will always need a time frame. They're going to be from the year ended, you might hear, which would be January through December 31st or for the month ended January or, you know, the first through the 31st of January or something like that. You have to have a frame, whereas the balance sheet is as of a point in time. And when you think about this, you want to think about uh, cash, like the, the cash is a, con is a balance sheet account. Probably the first one that comes to mind and revenue is probably the first income statement account that comes to mind. Many people will conflate those two things as if they're the same thing. They're not. And you can think about it. If you say, how much cash do you have? Then, you know, someone might, you know, they probably won't want to answer the question. If you ask someone that maybe they might say, you know, none of your business, but if they wanted to ask it, they can, they can then look at their bank account as of now and see how much cash they have. If you ask somebody how much revenue do they have, 
notice they have to think in their mind. They got to go, uh, what do you mean? Do you mean like every paycheck twice a week? Do you mean once a month? Do you mean yearly what my revenue is? You have to have a time frame because it's a performance measure. So it would be like, how, how long does it take you to do something, run a mile or something like that? You need, you need the timing. So that's what revenue is going to be. It represents how much we have earned over some time period. So that's going to be the top line of the income statement. That's what the objective, when you think of, of um, business from a, from a, you know, the generic business perspective, from a generic business perspective, the objective of the business is to generate revenue. Now, obviously, when you think about a business's, business's mission statement and, and whatnot, like Apple's mission statement is going to be to, to create change or to be, you know, to be a change creator, you know, <laughs> or create new ideas or be leading in this industry. But obviously, from an income perspective, performance perspective, revenue is going to be the point. And the revenue should reflect then, of course, how well they're doing with whatever mission they're doing, whatever they're providing to, to us, to the, to the community, right? So revenue is from a financial statement perspective, our objective, that's the top line. That's, that's why we have assets. We have assets in order to help us generate revenue in the future. That's why we have expenses. We have expenses in order to generate revenue in the current time period. That's why we have liabilities. We took on liabilities in order to finance the ability to generate revenue. <laughs> Uh, in the future, right? So everything is geared towards that top line performance wise revenue. We're trying to increase revenue and we're trying to do so with limited or reduced cost, including reduced expenses. So there's going to be a revenue. Also note that revenue can have different names depending on what, what type of industry we're in. Revenue is kind of a generic name, which any company could use revenue as the revenue account. If we sell things, uh, inventory, it'll also often be called sales. We could call it income. If you hear income, that should be the top line rather than the bottom line, which will be net income. But uh, income will typically is, is something that it could be called. It could be called um, uh, fees earned if we're like a law firm or something like that. Then we're going to have the cost of goods sold. We saw this in a prior presentation for the gross profit calculation. We're going to break cost of goods sold out. It's an expense, but we're going to put it into its own subcategory in the income statement. It's one stop along the way to get to the gross profit. So remember the cost of goods sold represents us using something, but we didn't expend cash in this case. We expended the inventory. The inventory, we paid cash for the inventory, but we paid cash for the inventory on an accrual basis whenever we bought the inventory, which might've been like last year or something like that, right? We didn't expense it when we bought the inventory as we would under a cash method, because we typically used an accrual method where we put it on the books as an asset. And then we waited until we actually sold the inventory, then moving it from the asset of inventory down to the expense of cost of goods sold, expending, spending something, spending an asset, that asset not being cash, but spending the inventory, giving it up, giving it away in order to generate revenue. The inventory is going to be one of our most significant expenses if we sell things Therefore, we have this gross profit calculation that's going to be a stop along the way to get down to the net income. So that's going to be the revenue 2300000 minus 170. That gives us the 580. So the gross profit, it, not to be mistaken for net income, it's just one stop along the way. It's a pit stop because we think that that relationship between revenue and cost of goods sold is an important one. And therefore, we want to have that stop along the way. Then we have the selling and admin expenses. Now selling and admin, we kind of grouped them together as, as the two groups of expenses that we could have. So selling expenses uh, are, you know, if you, if you sell things, inventory, then cost to get sold is going to be one of, your, one of your big expenses. And then you might break out your other operating expenses for normal operations into selling expenses, which obviously could be geared towards the sales force, the store, Anything within the store that you sell things, <laughs> you, you would say selling expenses, commissions could be involved in selling expenses uh, and, and the store costs and whatnot. And then the admin, anything in admin, you're thinking the corporate office oftentimes. So the corporate often office, like all the management uh, costs will be then on the admin side of things. So we might break those out. We're combining them together. You might see them broken out and then see categories underneath the selling and admin, including sales commission, salaries for selling, so on, admin, 
office expenses, depreciation for admin, and so on and so forth. We're going to group them together now for simplification purposes to make this a little bit uh, tighter of a, of a financial statement to look at. Then we're going to have the depreciation expenses. We want to break that out separately because there's going to be special concerns with depreciation expenses. So let's discuss it a bit here and we'll, we'll get more into depreciation later. But depreciation represents us buying property, plant, and equipment. Something like a building, something like, uh, something like uh, uh, equipment. And then when we buy it under an accrual basis, we can't just expense this. If, if I bought a building for $300,000, I can't just expense it, even if I paid cash for it in the point in time that I bought it. Because if I did, you can imagine what would happen. This expense right here would be $300,000, you know, which would make the net income for this year way go very down, low, very much down. If I compared this year to the next year, it wouldn't really be fair because I'm still using the building next year, even though I paid for it this year. So next year, because of this giant expense I had, because I paid this big cash expenditure, it would look like I had a bad year this year compared to next year. And I can't, that's too big of a distortion when I'm looking at performance. So what I want to do is say, I'm going to put this on the books as an asset. And then this building that I bought, and then I'm going to depreciate it over the useful life, over the time period in which that building will help us generate our goal, achieve our goal. What's our goal again? To generate revenue. So we want to allocate the costs to the point in time that's going to help us to generate revenue, deviating from a cash basis standpoint in order to do so, so that we can more accurately measure performance in general. Because we deviated from a cash flow in that sense, we will have to then do a cash flow statement as well so that we can still see the cash flow. Cash flow is important, but so is comparing performance based on performance measures on an accrual basis. Therefore, we will have an income statement using an accrual basis, then a statement of cash flows to help us out with the cash flow information. So then the depreciation is us allocating the expense of these large things that we're purchasing that are going to basically influence uh, multiple years into the future. It's our attempt to estimate the period in which that expense is benefiting and then allocate the proper portion to that period. So because of that, this is not necessarily representing a cash transaction as well. And so when we think about, again, cash flow statements, we'll have to deal with that, that depreciation expense will, will be a key component that will be a difference. And then we'll subtract this out and we'll get to the operating income. So operating income, if we pull out the trustee calculator now, trustee calculator, make it a little bit bigger. It's a kind of a small calculator. We've got the last pit stop, which was gross profit, 580,000, minus the selling and admin, 276,000, minus the depreciation, 28,800. That gives us the 23,200. That's gonna be the operating profit. Now you can kind of think about that as the net income. We're almost there. But notice for for, comp you, for large companies, we're often going to we're also going to have to have a tax calculation on it. And we might have some things that were that are not going to be part of operating profit. In other words, these are the things that are in normal operations like uh, our normal business includes these things. There might be some things that we don't want to put in operating profit. We want to have underneath operating profit because they're not part of our normal business. For example, interest expense. Uh, might be one because interest expense is something that we only have if we have a loan, meaning if we need to finance the business, we had to take out a loan, then we had to pay interest when we paid back the loan. That interest is not part of our normal operations. It's not part of our normal business cycle. If it wasn't for the fact of us needing to have financing to take out a loan, we would have no interest expense. So we're, what we're going to do is say, hey, look, I'm going to get to operating profit before interest expense. So you can see what my performance is based on just my performance numbers, not counting the weirdness that happens or the added cost due to the fact that I had lack of funding for interest expense. And then I'm going to add the interest expense down below so that you can see that component and get to, the, to, to another subcategory. And then at the bottom of these things, when we talk about corporate income statements, we'll also have to calculate net income. So we'll add those, those things in future presentations. I'm sorry, we'll have to add taxes, tax calculation. Tax calculation is complicated because you, we have a progressive tax system. We have to estimate what the taxes are. 
So um, it's, it's a kind of a complicated calculation to figure out an estimate of the taxes in the middle of the year, per, for, for example. But we need to do that typically for a corporate uh, for corporate accounting. So taxes kind of muddy up the situation a lot because they're going to be based on income. So we'll also add the taxes. And then finally, we'll get to basically uh, the net income number and we'll continue on with that as we go. So we'll keep on building on the income statement. Once we're done with the income statement, we will then go to the balance sheet. Then the statement of cash flows, it'll be great.